Yugi Bros! What is up my Yugi Bros? Today we got another top 10 of the cards I would love to see in Speed Duels. This time we're rocking it with merit cards. I know like I said there's going to be character type cards as well as themes like Yugi, Kaiba, and Merrick. So this time we're going to run around with Merrick's top 10. So let's kick this off with an old fan favorite and that is the Revival Jam Package consisting of Revival Jam, Jam Breeding Machine, and Jam Defender. So Revival Jam is a level 4 Water Aqua effect monster with 1500 attack, 500 defense, used ever so iconically in the Slife of the Sky Dragon duel where Yugi got his first god card. Revival Jam says when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can pay 1,000 life points, special summon it, and face up defense position during your next turn standby phase. Now normally this isn't a very good effect uh, because it only works with when it dies by battle, but it's similar to King of the Skull Servants in this sense that if it dies, you can bring it back. It doesn't come back immediately, it comes back on your next turn standby phase, but it does come back as a tribute for future turns. And paying a thousand life points in 4,000 Yu-Gi-Oh, like I said again, isn't the greatest thing ever, but it is an iconic merit card, and I could see this come over uh, with the god cards on the horizon. Jam Breeding Machine is a continuous spell card that says during each of your standby phases, special summon one slime token, aqua type, water level one, attack and defense 500 in attack position. You cannot summon any monsters except slime tokens, but you can set. So when you use it, unfortunately you can't summon anything else, but you can still set. Uh, this card is very, very niche, but I don't see Revival Jam coming over here without Jam Breeding or Jam Defender. Uh, and again, it hones in the ability of tributing for the god cards. Lastly, we have Jam Defender, which is a continuous trap that says when an opponent's monster declares an attack on a monster you control, you can target one Revival Jam you control, switch the attack target to that target. So if you have a monster on the field that you don't want to get attacked and you have a Revival Jam, you can redirect the target to Revival Jam. Unfortunately, Unlike in the show where Revival just comes back immediately, it's not like you can redirect the attack to Revival Jam, have it be destroyed, bring it back immediately, and have you know it be a target for all of the attacks in that turn. Uh, unless you had multiple Revival Jams, I guess. But, you know, it goes with the package, so it makes sense why it would come over in that package deal as well. Uh, speaking of package deals, the next card I have on my list is Masked Beast Discardius. Now, this card is paired with a card called the Mask of Remnants, and it needs one of two monsters to be tributed for it, either Melkid the Four-Faced Beast, which we actually already have in Speed Duels, or Grand Tiki Elder, which we do not yet. So I expect Grand Tiki Elder to come over, uh, we had a Merrick Structure deck recently, which had Melkid in it. I have actually a lot of Merrick cards, so it was a little tougher to make this list. Uh, but then we would also need the Mask of Remnants. Uh, Mass Beast Discardius is a level 8 Dark Fiend with 3300 attack, 2500 defense that says, This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except by tributing two monsters, including at least one Grand Tiki Elder or Melkid the Four-Faced Beast. So you need one of the two to summon it. Uh, but it does count as a special summon to summon this, which is nice. And then when this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can equip one Mask of Remnants from your deck to one monster on the field. What's cute about Mask of Remnants is it normally says when you activate it, it shuffles this card into the owner's deck, so it does literally nothing except put itself back in the deck. Or, if this card was put into play by the effect of Mass Beast Discardius, this card is treated as an equip card and control of the equip monster is switched. So if you put it on an opponent's monster, it goes to your side of the field. If you put it on one of your monsters, it goes to your opponent's side of the field. So you can do a decent amount of different strategies with a card like this. Um, and obviously it's exclusive only to Mass Beast Discardius, but you would definitely have to bring it with Discardius if you bring both into speed duels. The next card I have on my list is a continuous spell by the name of Temple of the Kings. For all you older players that are going to go crazy, trust me, this isn't as bad as you think. This card was errated. It's a lot fairer than it used to be. Now it says you can activate one trap card the turn it was set. You can send one Mystical Beast Circuit in your monster zone and this card you control to the graveyard. Special summon one monster from your hand or deck or one fusion monster from your extra deck. You can only use each effect of Temple of the Kings once per turn. So it's not like you can set every trap card and immediately activate it, but you can set and activate one trap card a turn, which is still decent, I think, in something like Speed Duels. But also, if you send this and Mystical Beast of Circuit to the grave, which is actually the next card on my list, uh, it's kind of like a package deal once again. If you send both of these to the graveyard, you can special summon any one monster from your hand or deck or one fusion monster from your extra deck for free. 
So keep in mind, if you special summon a fusion monster from the uh, fusion deck and it's destroyed, you can't bring it back with any type of reborn type thing because it wasn't properly fusion summoned. Uh, but you can bring like almost anything you want out from the extra deck immediately or any monster you want from the hand or deck as well. And I could see this actually being somewhat competitive depending on the deck you play it in just because you can activate a trap the turn you play it and you get the second effect where you have Mystical Beast Circuit. Now, do you have to play Circuit with Temple of the Kings? No, but you do have to play Temple of the Kings if you're playing Mystical Beast Circuit. Otherwise, this card is immediately destroyed. This is a level 6 Earth Fairy, 2500 attack, 2000 defense. If you do not control Temple of the Kings, destroy this card. There you go. Banish any monster destroyed by battle with this card. So assuming you have Temple on the field, it banishes anything it battles, which is really, really cool. Also, if this card destroys a monster by battle, it gains 500 attack. So this card can get relatively big pretty quickly, at least in speed duel terms. Um, obviously, again, you wouldn't bring this over unless you brought over Temple of the Kings as well, but I don't think they'd both be insane. I think Temple of the Kings would actually create some really cool combos, as long as Burn doesn't abuse the heck out of it. The next card I have on my list is a continuous spell by the name of Vengeful Bog Spirit. This card simply says monsters cannot attack the turn they are summoned. It's a continuous spell, so as long as this is out, um, everything has summoning sickness, basically. And I think that's really nice. Uh, we need a little ways to slow things down, especially if we want to build a tribute summonable board for our god cards, quote unquote, uh, that you know we're going to be getting in this. That's the whole point of this box. Uh, so one way to slow down both you and your opponent and build up some actual defense is having it so neither monster can attack the turn it is summoned. That's interesting. Uh, I think this would slow down the game a little bit. Not that the game needs to be slowed down. I know the game, point of the game is called speed duels, but you know, this is okay. This would be perfectly fine. I don't think this would be OP. I think the only time this would get kind of chaotic is if the other card that I'm about to reveal on this list, Nightmare Steel Cage, also came over. I don't know if I expect both of these to come over, but I see one, if not the other, uh, and it might just be Steel Cage. Uh, Steel Cage is a normal spell card that says this card remains on the field for two of your opponent's turns, so it acts like a continuous card, but it's not. While this card is face upon the field, no monsters can attack. Kind of similar, uh, Bog Spirits only when everything's summoned, the turn they're summoned they can't attack, whereas Nightmare Steel Cage is like a Swords of Revealing Light, but it works for both players for two turns, uh, and then it's destroyed. Uh, but while it's face upon the field, no monsters can attack. Uh, I don't think this would be a problem, like I said, if we got one of these two things, and I think we'd get Steel Cage before we get Bog Spirit, just because uh, Steel Cage is more iconic, but at the same time, if we did get both, we'd have a lot of cards that would slow the game down and let us build our boards more in Speed Duel, something we really can't do too, too much of yet without worrying about our opponent going on the full frontal assault. So it'd be interesting to see if one or both of these came over to Speed Duels. The next card I have on my list is Jurigetto. Now, this is a, this was a normal monster in the anime when Merrick used it, uh, but I think this card actually deserves to come over here and I'll explain why in a second. This is a dark level 4 fiend effect, 1700-1300, that says during the battle step, quick effect, so this is after attack declaration, you can special summon this card from your hand and if you do gain 1000 life points. I've been killing for something that gave us life points, and outside of Golden Ladybug, I was hoping we'd get something a little bit more formidable. Jury Ghetto, I feel, is that formidable option. Getting a thousand is cool in speed duels, especially if you pair it with Revival Jam, getting that a thousand back you just paid to bring it back. But also, just competitively, getting a thousand extra in speed duels isn't OP, it's really nice. And you could summon this during the battle step, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, you can only use that effect of Jurigetto once per turn. Its other effect, however, is Quick Effect. You contribute this card, and then target one face-up monster you control, and gains a thousand attack until the end of the next turn. This could be really, really good, but I don't think it's overpowered. I do think it's really strong, and this would be a, definitely be a competitive card you'd probably play in everything, uh, because you get an extra 1700 beat stick during a battle step, you gain a thousand life points, and then as a quick effect, whenever you want, you contribute it to give something on the field an extra 1000 boost. Uh, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind that's most insane is Jinzo at 3400, but if you give each player three of these, I don't think it actually gets too, too out of hand. Um, but I think it would still be pretty, pretty relevant. Thank God you can only summon it once per turn through its battle step effect, otherwise it's just a hard normal summon uh, that would have this still really, really cute 1000 extra attack. But this is a card that's really good to like swing, 
do that 1700 damage and then tribute it after it swings to give something else in a thousand point boost it also makes weaker monsters a lot more formidable and obviously makes stronger monsters way more insane but again if you give both players three of these i don't think it's insane i don't think it's super overpowered but i could see this card being really really good going forward the next card I have on my list is Curse of Anubis. This is a normal trap that says change all effect monsters on the field to defense position. Now this is a little similar to Windstorm, obviously not exactly the same thing. It's not going to change defenses to attack mode, it's just going to change all effects monsters to defense. So normal monsters get around this, blue eyes stuff gets around this, so that's kind of cool. But also, until the end of the turn, the original defense of those monsters that are changed by this card becomes zero, also their battle positions cannot be changed. And that's pretty good because that'll be a blanket effect dropping everything else to zero battle positions can't be changed if you can come in with a quick assault like i don't know jerry uh and drop it in the battle step and then you can uh put that out after this thing with some especially in some type of like normal monster deck it basically ends up being a better windstorm at that point giving you offensive capabilities in the form of lowering your opponent's defenses to zero and making it so they can't switch their battle positions uh, i think this would be really cool this is a merit card so i could definitely see it come over here uh but don't get me wrong we already have a lot of merit cards already between metal reflex slime nightmare wheel etc so i i wouldn't be surprised if we didn't get this but i think this card would be fine it would just be another type of windstorm type card uh, and if Windstorm doesn't get a reprint in the speed box, this is basically a nice equivalent for all the players that don't have Windstorms. Uh, and it has a little extra effect of dropping everything to zero, which, you know, allows you to play other things as well. Kind of get over big, beefy beat sticks, especially when they're in defense at zero. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, Moth, Blue Eyes, something like that. You know, whatever. Uh, the next card I have on my list is a normal spell by the name of Tribute Burial. This card says you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn. Once during this turn, you can conduct a tribute summon that requires two tributes by banishing one monster from each graveyard instead of tributing. It is still treated as a tribute summon. So this is cool for everything that's two tributes out there. I know there's not a huge amount that we're playing competitively right now, uh, but there might be a little bit more after this card if it came out. Uh, allows you to banish two monsters, one from each graveyard, to use as its two tributes, which is kind of interesting. I think something like Blue Eyes could get a kick out of this, as well as being able to banish a monster from your opponent's graveyard. Uh, and then, you know, you can't special summon for the rest of the turn, but it lets you conduct a tribute summon. So, like, if, if you already normal summon slash tributed summon that turn, this is a second one. So you could drop something else onto the field. Uh, it makes all those two tribute monsters a little bit more formidable. And I just think it's a really cool card. I'd love to see it come over to Speed Duels. Uh, the last card I have on my list is Holding Arms. Now, I have this last because this might be insane, but I also think Jurgetto might be insane. And I have honorable mentions that, in my opinion, are way more insane than my top 10 list. So let's talk about Holding Arms for a second. This is a level 4 Dark Fiend Effect, 500 attack, 1200 defense. Keep in mind, this is not Holding Legs. Holding Legs was the one that actually saw competitive play in regular Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, no, I think that's a little too strong for this game, and that's not an honorable mention on my list. Instead, we have Holding Arms. Holding Arms says, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls. While this card is face-up on the field, that face-up monster cannot attack. Also, its effects are negated. While that face-up monster is on the field, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. So to give a most generic example, if your opponent has like a Jinzo on the field and you have all these traps you want to play, you can normal summon Holding Arms, target the Jinzo. The Jinzo has its effects negated and it cannot attack while this card is face-up on the field. And while Jinzo is face-up on the field, now Holding Arms can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. That's pretty interesting. Your opponent then has to kind of go out of their way to get rid of their Jinzo if they want to get rid of your Holding Arms or get rid of your holding arms by not destroying it by battle or card effects which is you know at that point i think you just have gale lizard currently and maybe one or two other cards i'm not thinking of off the top of my head and that's not many options so it it makes for i don't think negate effects like effect veil or breakthrough skill should come over to this game yet i think that's i think it's been nice to allow your effects to resolve uh, but a negate effect in the form of a normal summon uh, or a special summon, you can special summon this, uh, I think is a bit better. I don't think it's overly powered, but I do think it's a good way to start implementing some type of effect negation into this game. But I guess we'll have to wait and see what the Speed Duel Box has prepared for us for that situation. The last card I have on my list 
Before we get to the honorable mentions is a normal trap card by the name of Relieve Monster. This card says when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target one monster you control, return that target to the hand, then special summon one level 4 monster from your hand. Now, I'd like to pair this with Holding Arms, where if your opponent declares an attack, you can target any monster you control, return to the hand, summon the Holding Arms, and then have Holding Arms target something on your opponent's field maybe the monster that attacked for example and now it can't attack or declare its effect it would get a replay since you summoned a monster to your field and i believe they already declare attack declaration the replay doesn't replay the attack deck so if i'm correct that attack would still go through but if you want to negate that monster's effects or negate something else's effects or target something else you still can do that so i think this would be a really cool uh counter but also, this actually doubles against Holding Arms, where let's say they had that Jinzo, I guess would, that's, so let's say they had that Jinzo on the field, Jinzo's effects are negated for, through Holding Arms, they could bounce Jinzo to their hand, summon something else, and now Holding Arms can't, can be destroyed by battling card effects, and they essentially got rid of that lock on the board. I think this is a nice little uh, interchangeable way to uh, kind of balance out things like that, but also you can use this with a plethora of other options. Hidden Soldiers was actually the other trap card that I was thinking of putting on this list, but Hidden Soldiers is a little more specific. That says when an opponent normal or flip zones a monster, you can switch someone to level 4 or lower dark from your hand. And I don't feel like giving more dark monster support right now is really the option, so I felt Relieve Monster was a bit more generic, and any level 4 monster from your hand, so you can do a whole slew of options with this type of card. Lastly, let's go to our honorable mentions. The first one is a counter trap by the name of Judgment of Anubis, and this card says when your opponent activates a spell card that would destroy a spell or traps on the field, you can discard one card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Then you can destroy one face-up monster your opponent controls, and if you do that, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's attack on the field. Uh, no. I think this is too many things. I think if it was just the first effect, that'd be fine. You discard a card to negate a spell that destroys a spell or traps on the field. We have a lot of those right now, so I don't think this would be outside of the realm of possibility. But then destroying a monster on the field and inflicting its full attack to your opponent, that's where I feel like we should draw the line on this card. That's a bit too strong. I think we're fine on the amount of burn cards we already have in speed duels. We don't need any more. And this doing the full attack, not even half the attack, if you negated... Uh, your opponent, I don't know, double cycloning something on your field and their field, or twistering something on your field, and uh, by discarding, negating it with Judgment of Anubis, destroying it, then destroying a moth on their field, doing 3,500 to their face. I don't really feel that's really fair. So, and yeah, I get this is a trap card. Yes, I get Jinzo's coming up, but I don't, I don't know. I think this is a bit too strong. And that leads me to my last uh, honorable mention, and that is Malevolent Catastrophe. This is also a merit card. This definitely shouldn't see the light of day in Speed Duels for a long time, but I get that this could be really, really strong. And this card simply says, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, destroy all spell and traps on the field. We don't have a main phase 2 in Speed Duels, so if you attack with 3 back row and you run into this, you just got heavy stormed uh, and you have no way to recover from it, you're going into your opponent's turn. I think that's a bit too strong. I don't think we have enough options to stop this yet. Maybe in a few sets, if we get more ways to deal with this, one of these two can come over. I will say that if this is in the format, once you know it's in the format, you're obviously playing around it by either not setting all your back row, or you're popping as much back row that they have before you go into your battle phase, or have something that like stops trap cards before you go into your battle phase. So I'd say this is easier to play around than Judgment of Anubis, but that's not going to change my opinion of it. But guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, do these all justify out, or do you think we could uh, change it up a little bit? Is there anything that's too strong? Do you think Jurigetto or Holding Arms is uh, too good, or maybe Catastrophe or Judgment of Anubis is a little bit too OP, or is it just fine? Let me know in the comments down below. Comment, like, and subscribe as always. Click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. And I hope to see all of you in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Alright guys, I'm out.